guess what? Yes, now we, we got them back. We got them back. Thank we need goodness. to know where Madi is this morning. It's historic, it's beautiful, it's iconic, it's a landmark. Yes, and we don't know what he's going to show us, but we're ready to just listen and learn. Hello, Marty. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning. How are you? We are in a building that was built in 1850 when people built buildings to last, and that was part of the problem with losing our signal. Just to my left is a room that's six stories tall and mostly brass. Live television wasn't thought of in the 1850s, but we are in the Peabody Music Conservatory. We are in the gallery of the George Peabody Library. Sam, just tell me your last name again. Besson. B-E-S-S-E-N. Sam Besson is the curator of? Of sheet music and popular culture here at the Sheridan Libraries. Okay, now, here's the deal. There are signed copies of sheet music by Irving Berlin. Ira Gershwin. Ira Gershwin. Uh, Arthur Fiedler. Arthur Fiedler. But this is what we want to talk about. Right. Short story. Mm -hmm. Kay, come on over here with me. We got to go around to the other side. Sure. Sam, walk over here. A guy that wrote a poem named The Raven. That's right. Edgar Allan Poe liked this song, Mrs. Poe. Poe, in this case, meant poor. It was slang. He liked this so much. Now we're going to go back around to the other side, Kay that he, by his own hand, Sam, right. copied this sheet music to give to his wife? Yes, to give to his wife before they were married in 1836. So if you look at the bottom right-hand side of the manuscript, you can see it says, Ascribed to my wife, Mrs. Poe, by E. A. Poe, 1835. Now, how did you come, how did, how did you all get this? So we actually have a large collection of Poe-related sheet music that was collected by the Poe Society and donated to the university. And all of a sudden, you find this. Yes, as I'm getting ready for this exhibit that opens today, I found this manuscript. Now, you did tell me that when you look at that signature, mm -hmm. the A isn't constant with the way he signed his name. Exactly. The handwriting is not quite correct. So Edgar Allan Poe typically had a pointy A, but on this manuscript, as you can see, it's a rounded A. But, so are we saying this may or may not be? Exactly. We're not quite sure if this is a forgery or not. But every once in a while, I sign my name a little bit different, don't you? It's true, it's true. So, I mean, it's possible this is a very personal document that he may have used a, an atypical signature. This may be the most personal document we have of Edgar Allan Poe. Exactly, and if it's correct, it would be the only example of musical notation in his handwriting. Well, you know he was a great author, a great poet, a, 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 a pillar of literature. Right. But clearly he liked music. You, you, you don't... This is perfectly copied. Yes, although there are a couple of tiny little mistakes, like if you look at the treble clef here, it's not exactly correct, so it looks to me like someone was familiar with music, but not an expert on music, which, you know, lines up with Poe. But he liked the song, and this was a present to his wife. Has any, real quick, has anybody played this? Yes, in fact, we're going to have some live performances as part of this exhibit, and we will have a live performance of the song. Is the song good, or does it stink? It's not bad. It's not bad. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I was asking for a friend. Sure, sure. I'm going to leave you, though, with the following, because you can't talk about Poe and not say this. In there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, nor a minute stopped, nor stayed he. Quote the raven, nevermore. Back to you. More, never more, never more. Perfect All right. way. <laughs> Thank you, Marty. How many talents does Marty have? We're learning day by day, aren't we? They are quite endless, it seems. <laughs> yes, yes. Are.